Hello, everyone, and happy Tuesday. Welcome to Speak Up Says Talk Radio. And I am your host, Angel Charmaine. And today we have got an amazing guest here to talk with us today. Her name is Rakita Taylor, and she is the founder, owner of Sisters Healing Sisters Incorporated. So before I let you all meet Rakita, I want to say thank you to our CEO, Tammy Polk, the CEO of Lifted Authors Radio Network, as well as Kayla Paget the CEO of Finding Your Way Radio Network. Thank you for the opportunity to speak life into women every single first and third Tuesday of the month. All right, Rakita, let's go ahead and let's get into this conversation. Talk to our listening audience about who is Rakita Taylor. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Rikita Taylor, and I am a 34-year-old woman, um, single mom of two boys, based here in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And um, as you said, I am the president and founder of Sisters Hill and Sisters Incorporated, a nonprofit organization, as well as a real estate agent. Oh, wow. I didn't know that part. <laughs> I didn't know that part. I'm learning something new already. That's, new. <laughs> That's what's up. Okay, great, great, great. So before we jump into this conversation, because today we're going to be talking about finding your tribe. Listen, yes. as women, oh, this is a sticky, sticky, sticky conversation. So we're going to talk about finding our tribe and what that looks like and why it's necessary, or even if it's necessary um uh today but before we do that i do want you to just share a little bit about um sisters healing sisters because that's how i connected with you through social media um i said my goodness her platform it it is angel like it's what i do and so that i was drawn to you and your tribe based on the work that you do with Sisters Healing Sisters. So um, just share a little bit about what exactly you do mm -hmm. with a particular organization. Okay, um, I formed Sisters Healing Sisters to empower, educate, and elevate women from all walks of life through different resources, workshops, and outreach. The main basis of Sisters Healing Sisters is creating a sense of sisterhood in our community because I feel like that's an issue or area that's lacking out here. Um, and so when I created it, you know, I was just thinking about the times where I was just going through different things in life and I felt like I had no one um, right. because I, at that point I did have no one. So I was like, there, I want to create something that can help women and, you know, we can come together and not only help me, but I can help other women and we can help each other and create a sisterhood. And, um, Hence our our um our slogan when sisters touch and agree I heal you and you heal me so it's oh, just wow. creating a, a a sisterhood and like you said like a tribe so yes because right. I think that's important. I'm glad you said sisterhood. Sometimes when I use the word tribe, people you know people get their panties in a bunch. They're like, what you mean <laughs> by tribe? And, you know, <laughs> but. A, a a tribe is simply right a sisterhood it's a community right it it's people who get you yes Absolutely. and i believe oftentimes we think that no one gets us no one understands us no nobody knows what we're dealing with when in fact we're all somehow divinely connected right we're kind of woven together um, in this in this unique peculiar way and people do get us but right. we have to put ourselves out there to be seen to be heard and be open to connecting with other people right absolutely and um that's that's a, a point that um that I also want to want to mention because before I started this I'm very shy 
I'm mm-hmm. very standoffish in all of that. So um, just doing, stepping out and doing that and creating a sisterhood and creating a tribe, that was completely out of my comfort zone. Do you believe you created the organization out of your own need? Absolutely, absolutely. Because um, like I said, when I created it, I created it when I was at a, the lowest point basically in my life and I felt alone. Um, so when I created when I thought of the idea to create it, I was like, I want to create something where nobody has to feel like how I'm feeling. You know, um, there are people out here who c- care about you. There, women can get along, you know, um, right. and we can come together and, and we can help each other. We don't have to go through these things alone. Some of the, um, the trials and tribulations that I went through or that another woman went through, you know, we can use that to help each other, you know, and not tear each other down. When you said we can, we can get along. <laughs> yes absolutely we can get along i think we just need we need like billboards and we need some bullhorns we we need something to scream at women that listen it's okay to get along and it is possible for us to get along when i thought about this particular conversation it stemmed from one of the conversations in my book, Speak With Sheik, One Woman, Ten Truths, which is a compilation of 10 conversational narratives where one woman is sharing her truth, but all women can see themselves because we all share these truths. And one of the conversations is entitled The Tribe. It was a, there was a young woman who was a mother of four, just like me. I have four sons. She had twins. I had twins. She was married. I was married at the time. And we met through our husbands, okay? But one day, I was in a really, really, really low place, um, a place where I could understand how women were throwing their kids over the bridge. When you get to that place where you can understand that, you're in a low place. Mm, Not mm -hmm. saying, you know, and people ask, well, do you think you would have? You know, I, I like to believe that I would never do anything like that. But to get to a place where you can even understand it is low enough. So I'm having this conversation with this woman on the phone. And this... This is what I remember, that conversation with her is what I remember when I penned this. And I wrote, she could hear my pain and was willing to share her peace when I couldn't find peace for myself. Yes, that's that's deep. She shared her peace with me. Mm. Absolutely. that's, That's what we do when we connect with people who are in our tribe, right? I was right. listening to I was listening to uh this 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 guy talk and he said something that I thought was profound and it's something that I'm gonna explore in our next Speak Up Sis talk radio conversation. Um but it's the idea of how to connect with your tribe. I think sometimes Many of us want to connect with tri- with our tribe. We want these communities. We want these sisterhoods, but we don't know how. And one right. thing this gentleman said was that you've got to be willing to be authentic because your tribe can't see you when mm. you are not your authentic self. That's true. That's true. Definitely. I agree with that. I just, it it stopped me when I heard it. And when I think about women and why we don't con- connect and, and why we have so many issues connecting with people and, and we've got this thing about fake friends, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, fake people and dealing with fake people. And so it made me ask myself, are we having issues as women connecting with our tribe because we're not presenting our true selves. We're getting the tribe that connects with our representative. Exactly, because a lot of women wear masks, mm-hmm. you know, and um, due to whatever reason, you know, and they wear masks and, they, you know, um, they might have a smile on their face. Um, they might, you know, 
appear happy, but deep down behind that mask, it could be a whole nother issue. But if you're coming out and you're just happy, happy, happy all the time, then that's what people is going to expect. But really, you want to hug. You know, right. really, you right. want somebody to sit down and talk with you. Exactly. So that's why I definitely agree with you, you know, with what he is saying about being authentic, because if you're not authentic, how can I even get through to you, sis? If I don't even know, I don't even know you because you have on that mask. Right. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, trying to cre- I'm trying to create community here, but with whom? Exactly. Absolutely. So I when I when I heard that I that thing just really really stopped me. I mean it did. But you know I want to tell me a little bit about your tribe. Do you have do you have a tribe? Is your tribe um, certain types of women or do you have different you know different age groups? Um, that's another thing that I talk about within this particular conversation is that my tribe is intergenerational. You know, it spans race, it spans age, it spans even temperaments. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Tell me about My, your tribe. Do you have some special people that you can yes. part of your tribe? Absolutely, I definitely do. And I will say my tribe is very diverse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very mm-hmm. diverse, you know. Um some of my friends um, are younger, you know, and very energetic and all of that. Then I have some of my friends that are a little older and, um, you know, like to sleep <laughs> on a Saturday night like me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just, you know, then I just have, you know, my my friends that are very talkative like myself and, you know, out there. And then I have my friends that are kind of like introverted. So yes, definitely um, very, uh, very diverse. But you know what? Each one of them um, brings something special to the table. So um, yes. And I think that I think now here's, let me, let me say this. I think that it's very important to have diverse friends. You don't want all of your friends to be the same because how are you going to grow? If everybody has the same mindset as you, they look like you, they talk like you. How are you going to grow? You know, that's like robots walking around. And I don't want that. <laughs> Having your people, your tribe, your sisterhood, your community does not mean that they all will look alike. It doesn't mean they will all speak up, speak the same language. It doesn't mean that they will all, you know, do the same type of work, but they will all understand one another right on a spiritual level there's another piece of the conversation where i wrote as i grow and my journey ebbs and flows so does the tribe some have come and gone and some came and refused to leave that's another idea i'd like to explore is the is this idea that you've got your tribe has got to be close to you physically all the time. Right. Do, um, you have, do you have members of your tribe who live in other places or maybe you don't talk to every day? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that, what you just said, that's important. I was actually going to talk about, um, about your, your tribe evolving and growing. Um, mm. Because, you know, as you grow, as you elevate, you're going to need, because once again, if you, if you, if you're growing, but the people around you aren't growing and they're staying the same, then that's going to, you know, that could pull you down. But, um, yes, I, de- I definitely think that it's, you know, important to have a tribe that is diverse and not only, you know, they don't have to be sitting in front of you every day. You know, they can evolve and grow and you guys can still maintain that same sisterhood, that same tribe, that same relationship. So um, absolutely, Um, I believe that your tribe can be anywhere else. They don't have to be in the same spot as you, no. And they show up when they need to, don't they? Absolutely. (laughs) It's amazing to me how some of my friends, I may not hear from them for months or maybe even a few years but as soon as my soul needs what they bring to the table they just kind of pop up (laughs) (laughs) or 
yes. or I reach out to them because I know that she has what I need to heal in this area. Or there yes. are times when I just feel like I need to call so-and-so mm -hmm. because, you know, I just feel there's something that makes me feel like I, I need to have a conversation with her. And, and oftentimes, it, you know, it's they need me. They need what I bring to the table because it's reciprocal, right? It's not a one way. It's not a one way street. It's not. So I I want to very quickly because believe it or not, we're almost out of time. <laughs> <laughs> one thing about this show, I said thirty minutes is just not enough time to explore all of these topics. But I pray that as our audience listens, that they'll begin to shift their perspective a little bit. And, and you know, we give them a little bit of meat so they can mm -hmm. chew on it and spit out the bones. Chew up the meat and spit out the bones. <laughs> like to say. But one yeah. thing that I, I really want to get into before, before I let you go for the day is this idea of healing mm -hmm. in community. The, mm -hmm. the core of my philosophy when it comes to Speak Up Sis is that conversations build resiliency. And I, I believe a lot of the brokenness that we're seeing, especially with women, is, is because we don't want to talk to each other. We don't want to share you know, the words of our testimony. We don't, you mm -hmm. know, we don't, we don't do women. We don't like messy. We don't want mm -hmm. no drama. We don't want any of those things. And so we're not having the conversations we need to have. And in those conversations is where we heal, is where we learn how to be resilient, is where we, you know, we, we, we pick up some coping mechanism, mechanisms and some skills that we need to be able to continue living and breathing and being and thriving in this world. But because we won't talk to each other, we don't we're not healing. Right. Hence, hence the slogan, when sisters touch and agree, I heal you and you heal me. That means yeah. that I'm, I'm having a conversation with my sister. I'm pouring into her and she's pouring into me and we're going to heal together. But if we don't sit down and we don't touch and agree and we won't talk about it, how can either one of us heal from it? Or how can either one of us know that the other one is hurting if we don't right. talk about it? Right. Yeah. And there's healing yeah. and just shooting the breeze. Mm hmm You know, everything, every conversation doesn't have to be super deep. And we don't have to just meet when, you know, when our man done left. <laughs> <laughs> he is acting up. The people well, at the job that got on our yeah. nerves. We Just, can touch and agree and heal even through times of laughter. Mm -hmm. When we're just, you know, we turn the music on and we just dancing and, you know, have our glass of wine and just having good old fashioned girl time. There's healing yeah. even in that. I absolutely agree with that. Girl time is much needed. <laughs> it's, it, it's a part of what the tribe does, right? Right. Right. <laughs> and, Absolutely. And, and it's possible to have different tribes. I know for a fact that I, I'm probably in several different tribes. <laughs> <laughs> several different tribes of people because there are different people who meet different needs and who kind of kind of rock together at different spaces in life right? right but they are the people that I need in that space in my life and and I'm the person they need you know in 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 that space in their lives and so as we come together and we share you know we share the the truth of our testimony <laughs> we share mm -hmm. the truth we're we're our authentic selves we show up for ourselves as well as the people that we say we love and that we you know share space with it's it's in that place that we can truly begin to heal from from some of the crazy stuff we're dealing with Absolutely, I agree. We are going to wrap up this conversation. Here again, I'm telling you, this time is like, whew, 
30 minutes goes just like that. But I want to give you an opportunity to, you know, share if you have anything specific on your heart that you want to share with our listening audience. Um, I'm going to give you, give you the floor to do that. Okay, absolutely. There is one um, thing that I want to share with the listeners that I think is very important as we move into the new year. Forgive your sister. Mm. Doesn't mean that you have to deal with that person on the same um, accord that you that you were before, but I think it's very important that you forgive your sister um, because that's going to take some weight off of you. And you don't want to carry that baggage into the new year. And sometimes some relationships can be salvaged. So talk to your sister, forgive your sister, and move forward. And Rikita, don't that's back. a whole show by itself. <laughs> I, you just, listen, I, I was asking you to close us out, and you just like straight kick the door right back open. I'm, I'm sorry that that was on my heart y'all that's what that's what I want to leave with um forgive your sister um and then if you if you have Facebook my name is Rakita Taylor on Facebook and follow uh, my nonprofit organization um page Sisters Healing Sisters Inc we're on Facebook and also Instagram as well and thank you so much that me. is what's up <laughs> listen everybody Rakita is a beautiful soul um, I've not actually met her in person, but I've been paying attention to her social media presence and she's doing some amazing things and God is using her mightily to help sisters heal one another. And so I definitely wanted to have a conversation with her. I pray that you all have gotten a few nuggets from this conversation that will help you um, in your day-to-day -day walk that will help you to revive your dreams and empower you to walk in your kingdom purpose because that is what Speak Up This is all about. So I appreciate you for coming into this space, Rakita. You have been amazing. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. And You're welcome. You all can find all things Angel Charmaine and Speak Up Sis at www.speakupsis.com. Until next time, y'all take care.